Welcome back. So in this video, we are going to be learning how to understand access to none. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, wait, you already have a video on this topic. And yes, that is true. However, there were quite a lot of people that went away from having watched that video, still not understanding what is actually going on. So in this video, I'm actually going to take you on a bit of a deeper dive. So after watching this, there's really no excuse to understanding it at to not understanding it at all. So watch this video, you'll understand it, you'll know how to fix it, you'll know how to prevent it in the future and also write some better code to prevent it as well. So let's dive into it. Okay, so let's start off with actually recreating to have the error in some way. Uh, so first off, let's create a new blueprint class. We're gonna be calling, uh, creating an actor. We'll call it BP underscore actor. Super simple name. Inside of this actor, we're going to be creating a variable. Let's say we call this one money. Let's say we change the type to be an integer. And let's say we put the default value of this to 100 or something like that. Now we want our third person character, which is, this is, well, to, to give some context here, this is just a third person template. There's really not much done in here at all. Uh, so we're doing everything from scratch so you can follow along. Uh, so the third person character here, well, the only thing I have added is a debug key so we can press the E key and we'll print out some text on the screen. Uh, inside of this, we'll create a variable. We'll say that this is a test actor. We'll make it of the type BP actor that we just created and an object reference, okay? So instead of saying hello here, we can get our test actor, we can get it and we can say that we want to get the money. And this money that is in the actor, we want to print out on the screen. Compile, save, we run the program and I press E, you can see we get lots of zeros up in the top left. But we know that the default value is supposed to be 100, so something's wrong here. So if we stop playing, we can see we get a runtime error. It's access none trying to read, blah, 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 blah. So the first thing here is uh, understanding this error message. So inside this, this is error message, we'll get a bunch of different links. These are all the words that have an underline on them. And you can click on these to get to the different parts that are of interest. So if we click here, it will open up the blueprint uh, third person character. And then you can get to the event graph if you were standing somewhere else. And then you can print string, go to the actual part where the error is happening. So it's marking up this print string here now. So these you can use to navigate to the actual uh, source of your problem. So that's the first part. Okay, so now we have, we're getting an error here. So let's talk a little bit about why is that happening? Um, first thing you might be thinking, well, we, we don't have any actors in our actual level. I didn't actually put anything in here. So of course it's not gonna work. Well, uh, let's uh, do this. We'll uh, make this variable instance editable. And the reason we do that is so that we can go to our character here and we can scroll down and we can find uh, the test actor here so we can actually manipulate it if we want to. And then we'll go to our content drawer and we'll drag out two different actors in this world, like so. And let's go to the actor as well and say that we want to make the, the money variable here instance editable as well, so we can manipulate that as well. Okay, so what I've done now, uh, I will be explaining a little bit uh, using paint. So let's do that. I will be uh, going a little bit more in depth than I did in my previous tutorial on this topic. Uh, it, it is a little bit simplified, so if you're familiar with this topic, you, you might spot the, the parts that I simplify a little bit. Uh, the reason I do this is simply to allow it to be more digestible what's actually happening. Um, anyway, in this case here, we have this blank black space, right? Uh, this blank space is, uh, let's say, the representation of the memory on our computer. So this is all the different things that's available here. Inside of this area, we have an area that's designated to our game. So let's say that everything within this white border, that's where our game information is stored. Everything outside of here is operating systems and whatnot, right? Um, so inside of our game, we can have information. Now, the information in the computer is going to be binary. So if we were to have something represented here, it would be a lot of zeros and ones, something that isn't very readable for a human. So because of that reason, we are going to instead 
use something that is a little bit more readable just as a representation for what that information actually is. So let's say we have an actor one here and we can say that that one has 100 gold or 100 money is the currency that I chose. And then over here we have an actor two and we can say that it has 50 uh, money. So in this example over here, uh, these ones were both assigned to be uh, have a default value of 100. If we scroll down, actually scroll up, you can see that there's 100 here. So the first one has 100 and the second one we changed to 50. Now this actually corresponds exactly to our example over here. So inside of our third person character over here, we created a test actor variable reference. So this is an object reference to the type of BP actor. What this actually means is that we have something akin, oh wow, that was really, really thin. Let's see if we can get a little bit thicker. Well, there we go. All right, excellent, an arrow. Okay, so this arrow here is the actual object reference, the arrow itself. So if we at any point want to have some information from our object, this arrow will be pointing to where we get that information from. So for example, if we go over here and we say to our third person character that we want to have our test actor be this actor over here, the one on the left, which is the one that we designated as one, and I press E, you can see that it will type out 100. The reason for this, that's not what I wanted to do, there we go, is that we now have this object reference pointing to this actor. So when we say get money, we get this value back. If we were to instead point to the second actor and say get money, we get 50 back. So let's demonstrate that a little bit. So we go over here, we say we want to change and have that actor instead. Press play, press E, we get 50s up in the top left, right? Everything is fine. So what is the accessed none all about? Well, uh, when it comes to computers, we can have something like uh, references or pointers that are not actually pointing to something. Uh, these are usually commonly uh, referred to pointing at something that is null, which is essentially nothing. So we'll just call this null slash nothing. Let's do a dash instead. Like so, change the language, there we go. So what happens here is that when we have an object reference, in this case, this is the object reference that we have, and it is not pointing to one of these actors, then it's actually pointing to null or nothing. And we say, when we query this object or this lack of object that we want to get its money, it doesn't have anything to return to us. So in the case of here with a third person character, if we take our actor over here and we say clear, so we have no actor running or selected for our reference, yet we still try to access it by pressing the debug E key here, we get zero. Because as this information tells us here now, we're trying to access information from something that isn't actually pointing to an object like it is expecting. So we say that we want to have a BP actor here that this should point to so that we can get its money and then print it out. But we're pointing at nothing. So when we get or ask for the money, we get nothing back and we get an error instead. So that is in essence all that access done is. You're trying to reach information to an object reference of some type that is not currently set. So if we were to spawn an actor and set this variable at some point, or that's what we're expecting to happen, and then later we're trying to access information like money from it, but for some reason that code didn't execute, then we have a blank actor or the object reference not actually pointing to something. So when we try to get the money, we get an error and zero in the result in this case. Okay, so, so that's access none. It, at this point, I reason that there's no way to not follow along what has been done here. So what is the next step naturally when you are in a situation like this? Let's say that you have a bunch of code um, that is a little bit more advanced and you're debugging and you get, or let's say you're not debugging, you're running the code and you get an error of access none. How do you find out where the problem is? Well, 
The links can take us to the print string in this case, or the, the node that is causing the problem, and you have something that's inputted into it. Now, in this case, I just have one simple object reference, but it could be something more complex. Maybe this object reference uh, has a component that we get. So maybe we get a component by class, and this actor component over here is something that we say get money to, and then that is supposed to type out. Now, in this case, what you can have then is a chain of object references, and you can't be certain of which one is actually causing the error. What you have to do then is start from the left to the right. So in this case, you have to make sure uh, at the time of running that the, that the actor, in this case, the test actor is valid. So you can check that against valid like this. And having information go from here, then you know that it's actually set and pointing to a valid uh, object. Is not valid means that it will be pointing to something that is null or nothing, right? So that's one way to do it. Uh, once you've figured out that this is valid, you go to the next one in the chain, so the next one to the right, and you make sure that that one is valid. Then you continue that way along all the different objects that you might have in your chain until you figure out, okay, which one is re not returning a valid object for me here that I'm trying to interact with in some way. And then once you've done that, you have figured out the source, then you can backtrack from there and debug why that is not happening and then fix the issue. So some things you can do in relation to this, uh, since this is like a, a debug approach to finding a problem, uh, you may have another approach as well to make sure that your program doesn't uh, break down with these errors saying access done, uh, which is usually referred to as defensive coding. Now, uh, defensive coding is usually good so that you don't try to execute some code and you get some error that you're not expecting because in a game that is actually running a build, then this might cause a crash or something like that, and you'd rather prevent that from happening. So in that case, you could have something like this, get test actor, and you can say that we want to check against valid. So this little node that we have here and say only when it's valid, we run our code. An alternative to this is that you can right click and you can convert a variable to a converted, uh, a validated get. A validated get works in a similar way. You can execute the code like so, and then the valid execution pin here will be, will be run if it has a proper object pointing to, not valid if it does not. Um, so you might want to run your code through the valid part. Uh, the problem with this is if you do that, you might not figure out that there is something wrong. This is where the not valid node comes in. Uh, this one you use for logging or typing out or in some other way informing uh, the user or the developer during the development phase uh, that something went wrong so that they can go, oh, okay, uh, in this uh, blueprint, in this method, uh, this value was not set, money was not set, uh, or what money was not possible to retrieve for some reason. And then you can backtrack from there and say, okay, what are the conditions that this happened at? Okay, so to reiterate what we've done, we have given a basic example showing that if you have an object reference that you're trying to access without it being set, you will have an access none error returned to you. If it is actually properly set, you can actually access the methods, variables, and events inside of it. Because this doesn't just apply to variables, it applies to events and, and uh, functions, methods, uh, things like that as well. All, all information that you're trying to in access or interact with essentially from an object. So we now know what is causing access none and how that works. We also have discussed a little bit about how you can debug a chain of object references so that you can actually find a problem in case you run into one. And we have also talked a little bit about defensive coding, how you can prevent these errors from happening at the same time as you probably want to keep some kind of logging uh, that these things are happening uh, at some points in time so you can go through your log and check uh, these are things I, that you need to ch uh, fix for uh, your build moving forward essentially. Anyway, uh, at this point I feel like you have now mastered access none. There is no possibility, of, possibility at all of not understanding it and you will never have this issue again without understanding why. I hope that was useful to you. Keep on learning. Take care. 
A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.